بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أن شر الأمور مبتداتها وكل مبتدأ بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد وبرلي we are discussing the book of كتاب التوحيد and we're going through now the chapter 11 and this chapter starts with the title that it is not allowed is prohibited to slaughter for the sake of Allah yet in a place where it is used for the slaughtering for Allah than Allah. Now this chapter follows chapter number 10, which talks about slaughtering to Allah than Allah, which we have discussed. That is a person slaughtering for the sake of Allah than Allah. We said that if you slaughter in the name of Allah, yet for the sake of Allah than Allah, then it is shirk. And we have given example to remember when these people see a leader passing by, they slaughter the animal and they leave it. And the sleep is slaughtering for other than Allah. But if you slaughter to your guest for him to eat, then it's no problem. This is chapter which we have discussed, followed by this following chapter, which is that you are slaughtering for the sake of Allah. But you are slaughtering in a place where it is used for Allah than Allah So you're slaughtering for the sake of Allah, but in a place where it is used by the people to slaughter for Allah than Allah. And this is prohibited. So this chapter starts with La Yudbahurillah. La Yudbahurillah is like it should not be and you must not. So it got both meanings that you should not that means shouldn't be, and a command, a prohibition, that shouldn't be, shouldn't. So this place cannot be used for slaughter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is a place used for people to slaughter to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word in Arabic used here, be makan. And the place here, not fi makan. And the difference between be makan and fi makan is that the word, the latter proposition is be, is to say not just in the place, even around it. So, not to slaughter for the sake of Allah, not just in the place, even around the place. So, it, <clears throat> let's say a place like, for example, Aylesbury, where people do slaughter for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when we say, let's say, in Perpendicular. Per now, what is the next street? Don't know what it is. So <clears throat> let's say that. What's the name of the next street? Church of Church of Okay. So when we say that people is slaughtered in the Prependale, it doesn't mean that church was allowed because church was next to it. What's the reason? Because we don't want to reinforce the creed or the belief that this shirk is correct. So we were slaughtering Churchill of any other words really no no really just pull. It's too much trouble. It's getting the edit. Too much trouble. In the sun? Too much trouble. Yeah. Oh yeah. <coughs> yes, better. Just in that it's really it's sharp. Very sharp. <coughs> so So even next to the place, if you think that this slaughter next to the place will reinforce the false aqidah, the false belief that this slaughter to Allah is correct, then it's prohibited for you to do so. Let's go to the first verse. Now. Allah Most High says, La taqim fihi abada, la masjidun ussisa ala taqwa min awwal yawmin ahaqqu an taquma fihi. فيه رجال يحبون أن يتطهروا والله يحب المتطهرين 
do not ever stand in it, they must do 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 it, they so let's discuss now the meaning of this verse and what is the link between the verse and the chapter two. The verse is in Surah al -Tawb. talks about a story that took place at the time of the Prophet Sonsa. For very many in the Battle of Tabuk, the hypocrites, the ones who pretend to be Muslims, that they are too far from inside. They've asked the Prophet to pray in a masjid which they had built. And they built it in Quba. So they said to the Prophet, we want you to pray in that masjid. So the Prophet he promised them that he will do so on his way back from Tabuk. Tabuk is the battle that took place in the year 9 of the Hijra after the battle of, or after the repossession of Mecca. Now, what was their claim? What was their reasoning for that? They said, we want, you know, to make sure that we have enough place for people to pray. So, what they did is that they have asked the Prophet of Allah to pray in that place which they have built the masjid and uh, in order as they claim that it will be more of a space for people to pray. Now on his way back the Prophet of Allah was told by Jibreel alayhi salam that these people they did not build it for the sake of what they claimed which is to make more space for the people who pray but they built it for the following reason. Number one is to make it like a harm for the Masjid of Quba. That is why it was called Masjid Lirar. Lirar means for Dara, Dara means harm. So they have built it in order to harm the Masjid of Quba. Number two, they built it for the reason that, which is a disbelief, not to believe. So, in that masjid, there will be disbelief confirmed because the ones who have built it are the hypocrites. So, they go far from inside. Third reason they have built this masjid is to separate the believers. So, instead of a, a group of people praying the masjid of Quba, which are a big group, then they will be smaller, they will be divided into two masjids. And that is why we say it is not permissible to build a masjid next to a masjid, if that masjid is capable <coughs> of taking the people, or if that masjid can be extended, why you want to build a masjid next to another masjid, unless it's a different makina. So you have a masjid, for example, Brainly, then you want to masjid Salaf Sunni, no problem. But if it's two masjid of the Sunnah, and they're next to each other, uh, they should not be case, we should not be building a masjid next to a masjid because you're going to split the believers. Fourth reason is that to plot against the ones who fight against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's believers. So this place was made for the sake of fighting those believers. So it's like a headquarters for the Kuffar, for the Hebrews. It was said that a man went to Bilal Shem, and his name is Abu Hamad, and he had some dialogue with the hypocrites. And they themselves got together and decided to build this masjid by the instruction of this person, so that they would get together and plot against companions of the Prophet In that verse, Allah says, They can offer you, O Muhammad, that they intend good. But this is always the way of the hypocrites. They always give an oath, which is a lying oath. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies that they are hypocrites. Can I ask you to read that up? Okay. 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 Okay.
was amazing. You don't need them. Yes, that's better. And he said, oh, 
and that's what he said. He said, for verily, we did not see the sun for a whole set, meaning for the whole week. So set is being used for what? For the week. So the week is called set. Saturday. It was from Saturday to Saturday. So he said, when the Prophet of Allah made the supplication for seeking the rain, <clears throat> we did not see the sun for a whole week, and he called the whole week set. And the Prophet of Allah said that usually it is the case. After the Jumu'ah prayer, he would go to the Ansar who are living around the Medina, the outskirts of the Medina. And he would make sure that, you know, they are not in need of anything. So in case some of them did not turn up for the Jumu'ah in Medina, Prophet of Allah would go to the outskirts of the Medina, which is Qubad, in order to see if these people are in need of something. So, the Masjid Qubba is a great Masjid, but you should know the fact that it is not allowed for us to designate a journey from here to the Masjid Qubba. But Masjid Qubba can be the package. Meaning, Prophet Allah he said that Ushadu Bihar illa illa thalathati masajid. You should not designate a religious journey means for seeking reward except for the three Masjid Masjid Al Haram, Masjid Al Aqsa, and the Masjid of the Prophet. Now, if you pay a visit to the Masjid of the Prophet, there's no harm for you to go to Masjid Quba from there. But from the original intention from here, you should not say that I'm going to just go to Quba. No, you go to the Masjid of Prophet or the Masjid of Mecca, and then later on from there, you go to Masjid Quba and if you pray the Turaqa, regardless of which day, it is equivalent of making a Umar. In that ayah, which we have discussed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fihi rijal In that Masjid, which is the one we both built upon, what we have said, it means Masjid Qubad, and also it means the Masjid of the Prophet He said that these, in that mid Masjid there is men who loves to purify. Now purification here, all types of purification. So these purification is people that purify in the heart, purify from the hypocrisy, purify from the envy, purify from uh, uh, grudge and hatred. Okay, so it is actually involves the purity of the body and the purity of the soul. They are loved to be to be pure. And also the Tahara means as I said, the body wise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about the hypocrites that are rich. Say I That is, uh, uh, that we haven't really meant this and we are with you, we are along with you, just because they, well, they wanted to leave them aside, they wanted to investigate with them to know the truth. So leave them, for when they are rich, they are filth in their heart, filth in their body, even they have a shadow, they filth. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the ayah, Wallahu yuhibbul mutahirin, Allah loves. The Prophet came to the people of Masjid Quba to show them the Masjid which was meant there is Masjid Quba. He came to the Masjid Quba and he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had praised you in this verse regarding this purification. So what is that purification that you are doing that the Allah Almighty has praised you for it? They said, Oh Messenger of Allah, it is nothing that we know except that we had neighbors from the Jews and they used to make a ghusl every time they go to defecate, that means they, they wash their backside. So every time they defecate, they excrete, they wash, they make water to wash their backside to remove the poo in the end. So we did the same thing. So this is a true story, a true hadith to show you that also, not just the purification of the soul, purification of the body. For those people, they used to copy the Jews every time they go to the toilet and they excrete, uh, defecate, and relieve themselves. They would wash the backside with water. But there is another narration which is not authentic, narrated in 
at the bazaar, also the bazaar, where it says that this area was revealed for the people of Quebec because they used to use stones and follow the, follow the stones by water. That is not authentic. But they used to use the stones and then after that the water. So using the stones followed by water for the sake of purification is no problem. But if you do that for the sake of you thinking this is the sunnah, you are rewarding all the wounded, this is a bit out. So if a person uses tissues, for example, and then after the tissues use water, or use water and then after that tissues, there's no problem if as long as he, he thinks this is just for more clean you know, purpose. But it is not if it's, if it's been used, if you think that this is the sunnah to use tissues and water, stones and water. This is the son of the Prophet, then it is not because the Prophet did not do that. And the hadith, as I said, mentioning the issue of stones followed by water is not authentic. Now, what is the link between this verse and chapter 20? Now, we know that this masjid, which was built by the hypocrites, it was actually mistaken as a place for sitting, it was taken a place for disbelief and hypocrisy. In order to split the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited his messenger Muhammad to offer the prayer in. Even that prayer of the Prophet is going to be for the sake of Allah. So it, it indicates as a proof that every place where Allah is sinned in it, every place where a sin take place, every place where a sin can take place is for the sake of Allah, and you should not offer the ibadah there. So this masjid was taken a place for the prayer. But actually the prayer is for sinning, for disbelief, for splitting the believers. We should not do the same prayer. So if a person he wants to slaughter in a place where well, this place is used for slaughtering to other than Allah, then it is prohibited. It's haram. It was like praying in the masjid of Allah. Even you pray for the sake of Allah, but you pray in the masjid which is used for praying and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the link between this and that. Right? Same as well, similar. That is when the polite person, he, for example, when the person is prohibited to pray when the sun rises or when the sun sets. Why? Because that particular time is used for what? For profound. Or praying when the sun is rising or when the sun is setting. So when the sun rises, you find, for example, some people in Japan, they pray for it. So in that place where if you are there, uh, or if you are here, you don't pray in the time when the sun is rising. Even if there is no people next to you doing it, Allah prohibited you from that. From that. So this is now linked even to the time, not just to the place. Linked to the time. Right, now we come to the following hadith, which is hadith of Thabit ibn Zuhar. Now, Thabit ibn Zuhar, radiallahu anhu, said a person about to slaughter a camel at Bawana. Bawana. Bawana, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who inquired, was an idol from the time of Jahiliya worshipped there? They replied, no. He asked, was one of their celebrations held there? They replied, no. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fulfill your vow. No vow in, disobe in disobedience of Allah should be fulfilled. No one concerning something the son of Adam does not possess. It is recorded by Abu Dawood and meets the criteria of Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith is authentic from Tabak al Muhammad, a companion who is well known. He died in the year 64 of the he says that the man made a vow to make a slaughter for camels in a place called Bawana. So he came to ask the Prophet of Allah of the validation of such a vow. Am I allowed to do that vow? Am I allowed to do the vow of fulfilling in Bawana? So the Prophet said that, being asked as a mufti, as a prophet, and if you are the first person to be asked, and if there is need to be clarified about the value of security, then you ask. So, if somebody asks you, for example, what is the inheritance of my brother if I die? So you can ask, is he a full brother or half brother? That's the question you need to ask, because it depends upon it, the answer. So the Prophet said that before he said to him, Haram or Halal, to slaughter, because it looks like it's Halal to slaughter camels for the sake of Allah. When he said, why did he 
this, especially about Bahman. Prophet of Allah, he wanted to inquire, to make sure that this man is not doing something haram. So he said to him, Marid, is there an idol with them? In the idols of Jahiliya is to be worshipped in that place. The answer came from the ones that were around, not just from him. He said, No, no, Messenger of Allah, there is no such thing. So he asked about the shirk itself. So is there in the idol, in the idol of Jahiliya, even this idol was taken, you know, away from them. Even since this idol was a long time ago, but the Jahili used to worship this idol in that particular place where you're going to be slaughtering because the people of Jahili, whenever they have an idol and they used to worship that idol, they used to slaughter for that idol. So if there's an idol there, then definitely these people will be slaughtering to it. And now, the moment when you do that slaughtering in that place, you're going to reinforce the shirk, you're going to revive the shirk. That's what it is. You're going to make people think that you are doing the same thing as the farm. You mislead other people. So he said, Is there any idol? Was there any idol? Was there? He didn't say, Is there? Was there? Because there's not, no idols now. But was there any idol in that place? And the idol of JV used to worship. They said, No, it's not true. So now he's asking the following question Was there a Eid? And the Eid in that place? Eid means celebration. So he's asking now about the means, not the shirk itself, the means that would lead to shirk. Because if this place was used as a festival place, a place for celebration, why did the fall in that place? That means they're celebrating poof. So if you are now making a slaughter in such a place, you are aiding the poof. You are reinforcing the poof in the hearts of the people. So they said, no message. So the Prophet I said, Fulfill your vow. If you did not mention the man in the place of Bawana, the Prophet would have never asked. He said, I have made a vow to slaughter the camel. The Prophet would have said, Go on slaughter the camel. Because slaughtering the camel in the sake of Allah is a good thing. But when he mentioned the place of Bawana, that's why the Prophet of Allah inquired, Is there any idol there? No, Messenger. Was there any festival being taken place there by the Ufa? No, Messenger. So the Prophet said, Then fulfill your vow. Not only that, he said, for very there is no fulfillment of a vow when it takes place in sinning against Allah. So if you are vowed to sin against Allah, then there is no fulfillment. So if you vow to make shirk, you are vowed to fornicate, you are vowed to drink alcohol, there is no fulfillment of that vow if it is the sin of Allah. And there is no fulfillment of a vow in something that the person does not possess or is not capable of doing. I'm going to explain that in a minute. For the the vow, if it takes place, we want to understand from the beginning, is it good to make a vow or not? Well, what is the vow? You say, upon me a vow to do such a thing, so and so. Once you do before and you make the vow, then whatever you're saying it becomes compulsory. You're abiding to do it. The difference between the vow and the oath that if you make a vow, you have to fulfill it. And if you make an oath and you've seen another, so you made an oath to do something, but you have seen something which is better, you could, okay, uh, violate that oath and explain. So I made an oath, for example. To make it to go through this door. Well, all I am going to do is go through that door. And suddenly I saw a snake there in that door, and I find that door is more accessible. So I will break my oath, no problem. Okay. I'm going to go there. But the vow, I made a vow, I had to fulfill it. I have to fulfill it. It's obedience for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no such thing that, you know, I can't do it in a so if you, for example, said that if Allah kills for me, my son, upon me, another, another, we call it the word of another, upon me, another, and I'm going to slaughter a hundred cows, a hundred camels, and Allah kills for you, your son, there's no such thing that I could really have an option now to slaughter a hundred chicken, a hundred rabbits. I have to slaughter a hundred cows or camels, regardless. It is uh, legal.
ink to what I've said. So the vow is a strong one. And that is why the Prophet of Allah said, La yati bi Vow does not come with the good. Does not come with the Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had prayed for one who fulfilled their vows. They fulfill their vows. But this does not mean you make a vow to fulfill it. If you made a vow, you have to fulfill it. Unless there's an excuse, which we're going to talk about in Jabal. To initiate the vow from the beginning is not good. Why the person makes a vow? Prophet Ali said, this is something that uh, to extract from the stingy. You know, you're a stingy person, but don't give them the sake of Allah. Upon me, I'm going to slaughter. Vow, Nazar, Nazar, I'm going to be making a slaughter for the sake of That means you are actually forcing yourself by this Nazar to slaughter for the sake of It means you're a stingy. You are a bakhir. And the Prophet said, does not bring good. Okay? It is usually the case when the person makes a vow, he always regrets. And that is why you come to the slaughters, please, I mean, they're now to slaughter out of camels, is it possible to slaughter other brothers and a chicken? And he makes excuses. Always, always makes excuses. There's only regrets. So, especially when these people go to, you know, regarding their issue of that their son is in a new and desperate situation, they make a vow to Allah. And when you do like this, so you are actually saying implicitly that Allah will not give me what I want unless I give him something. Do you understand me? Allah will not cure my son unless I slaughter for him. SubhanAllah. Allah gives to him to the kuffar. He will help and cure the children of the kuffar. So if you believe in Allah, will not give you the cure until you pay him. Huh? Until you give him. That's a wrong aqidah. That's why it's not good. And that's why Shukri Santanir is saying it's prohibited. Another is haram. Some of the scholars say another is not rule. Well, definitely that another which is suspended, which we not suspended, which is conditioned, so conditional another. If oh Allah you do this to me and I'll do that to you. If you cure my son, I will slaughter him with you. That is definitely how another. Because you are actually putting a condition upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you say that Allah will not do that until you do that to him. So that is why. And there is a good explanation of the nether and the fulfillment of the nether in the book of Al-Qtillah. Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah has looked into it and it's very detailed. If I want to speak about the nether itself, it takes me more than two classes or three classes just for another explanation. But inshallah, we will pass through the important issues. Right, so he had made the nether to slaughter it in Balaam. Prophet Allah asked, Is there any shirk there? Is there any means that would lead to shirk? No, then go ahead and make the nether. Then the Prophet Allah he said, There is no fulfillment of another if it's in the sin of Allah. So you made another to sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order allowed to fulfill it. Now, is there an expiation? Or the another does not please? If you make another, for example, to do how to do something to shirk. Does that not take place? I know that I should not do it, but does, does it need an expiation for difference among the scholars? We said another division of categories, number one, another that you should fulfill it. And that is another which is in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Allah he said, He who had vowed to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then let him obey. So there is no excuse. So if you have made another to, for example, give charity within your capability to somebody, then you have to give it. This is another part of that. Second type of another, which is that is not allowed to be fulfilled, and that is another of the masi. Well, better than Prophet Allah said, there is no fulfillment of another, which is if it is sinning, if it is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it is in the displeasure of Allah azza wa jalla. That type of another, it will take place. You should not fulfill it, so there is an expiation. And what is the expiation of such another? It's the expiation of the oath, which is that is an option of freeing a slave, of feeding ten or clothing ten poor people. If you can't, fasting three days.
states. So it's an option of between two things, which is freeing the slave or feeding or clothing ten people, poor people. If you can't have that option, you don't have a slave, you're not capable of feeding or clothing ten uh, uh, poor people, then we go to the second one, which is that is fasting three days. Those three days you could fast them together or you could fast them separately, but you may not fast them on the days which are prohibited under the day of the Third category, which is the category of that is not a level, but it's actually an oath. And that oath you have a choice. If you do not fulfill it, then there is expiation, which has been detailed before. So it's like an oath. And the other another also from the category of another, which is another that takes place when you are angry, which is like uh, you could say idle, uh, idle speech, uh, nothing. And this is uh, uh, you know takes place in between the people. For example, um, if you know if this happened, I am going to fast the whole year. And you saying it is not because you're going to fast the whole year. Just you are challenging that person that this is not going to happen. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna fast the whole year. But you don't you don't mean it. So this take talks about, so that takes place as an oath. And the fifth type of nether is the one which we have said, the one that you say that if Allah kills the do does this to me, and then I will do that to him, which is haram, but if you don't fulfill it, then you have to expiate. And the last type of nether, which is the general nether, and that is like uh, an oath, like, uh, for example, Aliyah uh, Ilahi or Pomni is a vow, but you don't really name the issue you're going to do. So it's like an oath. Uh, after this, you're going to go to the last bit of the Prophet when he said, There is no another in what the person does not possess. And I translated that possess whether this is within his capability what he does not possess. What does that mean? For example, if a person made another that he would free the slave of somebody else, I mean, how can you make another of freeing the slave of somebody else when that slave does not belong to you? So there is no way for you to slave, free the slave of in somebody else's head because you don't have the authority of freeing it. He is the person to free. Yeah, yes, you give him money for him to free, but you yourself, you cannot say to the slave of the person you free. So you don't have that power. And the second type is that the one that you are incapable of doing it. So upon me, not that I'm going to fly in the wind. How can you fly? Okay? So this is something that is not within your capability. And this is the end of the chapter. And now we go to the issues. Before we go to the issues, we could really have the following benefit from this hadith. Benefit number one, that this type of nadr will make us to emulate the kuffar. Also, you should uh, know from this hadith that the person, if he does something that synchronizes to what the kuffar is doing, it might reinforce the kuffar. It might reinforce the kuffar. This person is going to be uh, for example, sporting in a place where there will be kuffar idols or festivals, you might revive that kuffar or apostasy. Right. Um, issues. Issues number one of exegesis of the saying, do not ever stand in it. But the explanation of the verse, do not stand in it, we have explained it. Number two. Number two, sin can, ha sin can have a detrimental effect on the earth. Obedience can have a beneficial effect. That's a very important point. Sin can affect the earth, and also obedience can affect the earth. So when this earth, which is Bawana, in this place, it had a shirk in it, it would affect it. And it is haram upon you to do the same or similar act onto that earth which was used as a sin, if you understand it. Similar event. So, for example, if Bawana had a, an idol, or people used to slaughter for their idols, or they had to have festivals and rituals, then it's haram for me to do similar rituals, but for the sake of Allah. Because it might give the wrong 
impression. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if I did a different, completely different Ibadah, then it's not proof. So let's say this Bawana, where people slaughter for the sake of Allah, Allah. they slaughter for the sake of idols. But I in Bawana, for example, started praying. Or I in Bawana, in that place, started giving charity. It's a totally different Ibadah. It will not really enforce the Ibadah which people used to take it. I'm saying this to make sure you understand that it is permissible for me to pray in the church where there is no place of prayer. The church has been taken for what? For shirk or not shirk? Shirk. But because my prayer is completely different from their prayer, and when I pray in the church, as long as there is no idols and images which is impossible, okay? So if you have, a, let's say, a little corner in the church and I pray my prayer, or let's say, for example, if you remember with me last year, Kingston Masjid was burnt. Um, two years ago. And what they've done, they have hired the, the whole of the church to pray the Jum'ah. And they tell all they pray. So there's no problem. The Muslim are not dissented. No problem, because your prayer is different from what? Their prayer is completely different from that. It, your prayer is the Quran and Sujud, that is what? But then, it's a different. So, because of this, it will not reinforce the Kufr of this. See the hint. If you understand the, the background of this, if you understand the theme, if you understand why, then it would be simply, simple for you to understand Haram or Halam. You can see it like a black and white. So, praying in the church. It, because your prayer is totally different from the prayer of the Mushrikeen, and there is no problem. Whereas, slaughtering in a place where people will slaughter for their idol, the slaughtering is the same because you are putting the knife on a sheep. It's exactly the same thing. Okay? So, if, for example, you pray in that place where the slaughter takes place, there is no problem. It's permissible. But because you're doing the same act that might give reinforcement for the coffin. And might give the wrong impression. Do you understand me? Very important. This. So I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. It's all to me, Sean. Right. Same thing. The obedience effective. What, are the, what is the most beloved place to Allah? Masjid. Because of what? The obedience. And what is the worst place in Saudi Arabia? Market. Why? Well, you go to the market and you tell me why. <laughs> you go to the market and tell me why. True or not? Yeah. Minimize. <clears throat> Don't go to the market. Unless you need to do so. Then all these people hardly cover it. Fit them. Remember, they don't really clean themselves in the toilet. That would put you off. Sure. <laughs> Number three. Number three. Time to bring an obscure issue in order to remove confusion. Hmm? Sorry. No. no. Number three, clarifying an obscure issue in order to remove confusion. Before I explain this, I'll ask a question. If we had a Shia masjid, well, it's not a masjid, you say me, you offer to ask that question. Before I answer, ask this question, answer this question. If we had a church to purchase it from masjid, do we purchase it or not? We like Hussein Muslim or Shia. Do we purchase it or not? Yeah. This is not one. You have to destroy it down here. Do you understand what's happening? Why is it? Because we're doing the same one. Yeah. It's bad. So if we pray in the masjid of the Shia, we're going to reinforce it because this masjid is well known to be what? Shia. We will be saying about wrong impression to the kuffar, same, and mis mis misleading some of the kuffar becomes Muslim, and misleading the Muslims as well. But you need to change the culture. You need to change the name. If you think changing the name would clear the situation, or oh, this Masjid Shia, for example, had stopped practicing Shiism, it was turned into, let's say, place for cooking, not for praying, and you think it's not going to be causing any sort of fitna, go ahead. I 
asked the question if you purchase a masjid with Shia and when the ritual has been held in I wouldn't go purchase a church or a synagogue or not Shia where they pray almost the same as our prayers. This question was uh, posed to the Sheikh uh, Al Halim. I have made this question. And the Sheikh was really said, your, your question is delicate and your situation is delicate because I've been asked to purchase, some people to purchase the Sheikh Hussain. Uh, they said, just keep away from it. Keep away from it. Now, number three, that you refer in the matter which has more than one answer to the one which is clear cut. What does that mean? So, Prophet of Allah, when he was asked about slaughtering in Bawana, he wanted to ask, he wanted to clarify. Before there was something, an option here, there was more than one answer. But when he had the clear cut that this place is not having any idols, no festivals, and he said, go ahead, go for your ground. Number four. Number four, if they ask him further questions, when there, was, when there was a need to do so. Then there is a need to do so, you ask the question. So if somebody asks you, for example, am I allowed to burn the ants? So this Mufti says, females or males? Is there a need for that question? No. Imagine. There's no need for that question. Males or females? Well, first of all, I don't know. I don't figure out whether they're fainting, females or males. And we do. We don't distinguish. Burning the ants is haram, halal, haram. Nobody burns anything except Allah. Burns anything here from the souls. So you could burn trees uh, or grass outside or houses if you don't want to do. But to burn human beings, to burn animals, they're all right. Five, there is nothing wrong in specifying a particular place when making a vow so long as there are no obstacles that were never prescribed. So if you brought a vow to go and slaughter next to the mountain, no problem. So there's no, uh, you could say haram in specifying the, the mountain as long as the mountain's got no shirk within there, no problem. Number six. Number six. The properly, the person, Amr of Allah, came to the Prophet and he said, Messenger of Allah. I have vowed when I was in my shirk time to make i'tikaf for one night in the Masjid Haram. Shall I fulfill my vow? My vow? Even if it was about doing his what? Shirk time. He said, fulfill the vow. Now, if you made a vow to make, let's say, i'tikaf in a place, let's say Mecca, for one night, you're not allowed to make that i'tikaf in, for example, the other Masjid, then the Masjid Haram. Because the haram is the one, it's the best. If you made a vow to make a etikaf in the masjid of the Medina, then you're allowed to do it where? Mecca. Mecca, because Mecca is what? Proud and more, more better than. So if you made a, think of a, for a vow to make etikaf in a place where it is less in favorism, in rank than the other place, then you're probably to go with the higher. But you can't go low. No. Number six, the prohibition of doing so if an idol from the times of Jahiliya was worshipped there, even if it was in the past. Just like when we, for example, have a grave and we built a masjid upon it. In order to make this halal, what do we do? It's a grave and we built a masjid upon it. In order to make that place halal. No. Demolish the masjid. Because the grave is still there. Even if you remove the grave, people still believe that that masjid was built for the what? For the grave. But if we built the masjid already, and then we have buried somebody in it, to make it halal, what do we do? Remove the grave. Because the masjid was built not for that person. Do you understand that? So if the grave was the original, and the masjid was built upon it, then we remove the masjid. Because if we remove the grave, still lingering to the mind of the people. This masjid was built because of that gun. It was built upon it. No. Okay. Number seven, the prohibition of doing so if one of their celebrations was held there, even if it was in the past. It's exactly the same as we discussed. Number eight. Number eight, it would not have been permissible to close a vow 
at the place because in such a case it would have it would have been a vow of disobedience. But you have to expedite number nine. Number nine, the warning against resembling the polytheists in their celebrations, even if the even if the person does not intend to. This is important point. Haram to resemble the kufar, even if you don't have the intention to do it. So if you are, for example, dressing up exactly like the kufar, but you don't mean to emulate the kufar, it's still haram. Of course, you have the intention, it will be what? More haram. So when we say to the people not to follow the trend of the kufar, even though they don't mean it, they can just, no, even they don't mean it. Because this is for the kufar. I see you, I will not believe that you are a Muslim. Okay? So even if you don't mean it, if you mean it, it will be more haram. Number 10. Number 10, there is no vow in disobedience. And we said there is no vow in disobedience, but you have to fulfill it. You have to expiate it, sorry. Number 11. Number 11, a vow taken concerning something that the son of Adam does not own is not valid. Does not own, and you have to add the translation, does not own or is not capable of doing. It's not within his capability. Oh, I'm making a vow to go. On top of Mars. <laughs> um, I meant I'm proud of me, I'm gonna hold the whole earth into my hand. By this way, I'm gonna finish this chapter. And I would like to go to the following chapter. Taking a vow by any besides Allah is a form of shirk. Now this chapter is linked to the one before it. Because it says from the shirk, it is shirk. To make vow to Allah, just like we can oath to Allah. To vow to Allah is equivalent to make an oath to Allah, which is major or minor shirk. Major shirk if the person intends, okay, that the one who is making vow to is as powerful as God So if you make an oath by the Lord, just know that it's your custom. But if you mean that oh, I'm a father, you think your father has got the power as Allah, then it's what shirk? Same thing with the vow. Now, vowing for other than Allah is much haram, more severe in haram than vowing for the sake of Allah in disobeying Allah. You understand me? If you vow to other Allah, more haram than vowing in the name of Allah yet to disobey Allah. Do you understand that? It's like making an oath by other Allah and making an oath by Allah to sin against Allah. Which one is worse? The one which is to make an oath by other than Allah. Because make an oath by Allah is what? Shit. And make an oath by Allah to sin against Allah is what? It's a sin. Could be major, could be minor, but still it's not shirk. Shirk, whether it's major or minor, is still worse than the sins, whether it's major or minor. Worse. And that's what Allah knows when He said, لَن أَحْلِفَ بِاللَّهِ كَاذِبَ خَيْرُ لَن أَحْلِفَ بِغَيْرُ اللَّهِ صَلَقَ To make an oath, He said, by Allah, while I'm lying, is less sinful. It is better for me than making an oath by other than Allah, even though I'm truthful. And that's a principle. That's a principle you should learn. If the person made an oath or made a vow for the sake of Allah, yet it is sinning, should he fulfill it or should he not fulfill it? You made a vow and a sick oath. Well, vow, vow, vow. Or made an oath by Allah. To do haram. Should you fulfill it? Should not fulfill it? No. Should not fulfill it. Is there expiation? Yes. 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 But if you made an oath or a vow by other than Allah, should you fulfill it? No. Should you expiate it? No. Yes. No. <laughs> no expiation. How about expiation? What? You're making an oath by other than Allah. If you expiate it, that means you are making some, some sort of rank to the state that you're making a vow with. You understand it? So if you're making a vow or an oath by other than Allah, you don't do it and you don't expiate it because it's worth nothing. That thing that you make an oath by or a vow. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you made a vow or an oath by 
let's say, Pharaoh, uh, or knows about by, for example, such a person who lives these days. You don't really bother about it because it's not going to take place anyway. And also, you don't expiate it because it's worth nothing. Now, the Sufis, they become Baba Badawi. Okay? So this Ba is Kuf, Shirk. Should not even be looked at, should not be bothered, should not be let done, should not be expiated. Right. So here it says, Mina Shirk. From the Shirk, that means from the major Shirk to make another Ba'ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Yufuna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْمِ وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَوْرُهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا They fulfill their vows and fear a day whose evil will spread far and wide. The author had brought in this chapter two verses. This is the first one, which is, consists of three or four verses. I just mentioned one of them. يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْمِ This ayah was being said order to praise those who are righteous. Talking about the righteous. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them that they are fulfilling their vows. So the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal, it means that this is Ibad. Because the person will not be praised and he will not be uh, deserved to enter paradise except if he did something which is Ibad. And also, other verses in the Quran, when he says, well, you fool with the world. let them fulfill their vows. So, the author here that is saying that the nadr by other than Allah is from the shirk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had praised those people who had made a vow by Allah and fulfilled it. And he made it from the reason of entering paradise. And there is no reason to make you enter paradise except if it is ibadah. So if this ibadah, you take it to other than Allah, it becomes what? Shirk. Again, the author brought this Allah praise. Those people who fulfill their vows, which is in Allah. So fulfillment of the vows in Allah is ibadah. It will take you to paradise. So the opposite of that, which means that if you have made this oath to other than Allah, then you have made a ibadah of shirk. Do you understand that? That's like the link between the verse and between as well the talk. Number two and Just without another, 
and listen, then there is an excuse for you. But if you were traveling in the middle of Allah, you have broken it off. <laughs> she understands me. So you have an excuse with Allah, you have no excuse with another. So don't make another. Another doesn't make the good to you. So another does not bring good to you. And then I just thought to be in the Bakhir. But only the stage G makes this another right the issue. Number one, the obligation of fulfilling a vow. And number two. Number two, it is established that making a vow is an act of worship. As such, to direct it any to any besides Allah is shirk. Number three. Number three, it is not permissible to fulfill a vow of disobedience. Right. Right. So you could really divide the another into two different. Another which is we call it mutlaq, another which is mu'allaq. Mu'allaq, which is this, this light or haram. The one you say, if Allah does this, then I will do that, that's haram. And another, another which is the one which is general, the scholars are different regarding it. So uh, you can say some of them, they say it's not, there's a silly slide, some of them say it's permissible, there's general. 